everyone, I'm Linda Nickel and welcome to the Happiness Hour, a meeting place that encourages photographers to connect, inspire, and create. My guests share tips, techniques, and the stories behind their photographs. The schedule for upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com. And if you haven't subscribed to the Happiness Hour YouTube channel, please check it out for sessions that you may have missed. And tonight's presentation, Behind the Shot, show us your summer. Several of our attendees will talk about the photo that made their summer a little more exciting and will share the story behind that shot, how they got it and any little tips and techniques that, they, that they're willing to share with the group. Christy Adams, are you in the room? Yes, I am. Hello, Christy from New Jersey. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, Gentlemen, you weren't invited, so don't take it too personally, but um, last <clears throat> Thursday, Christy was my guest speaker for a group that I um, moderate. It's the Texas Women's Texas Women Photographers Circle, and Christy was my guest speaker. That video is also on the Happiness Hour YouTube channel. So you can go back and check it out. Uh, we just don't let boys into the room. But Christy, remind me, it was the, um, I can't remember the title, the Pine Barrens. That's all I can yeah. remember. Uh, changing Seasons and the New Jersey Pine Barrens. Yeah. So uh, Christy hails from, she's a native, New is it New Jerseyan? I don't know what you want. Sure. Sure. Okay. sure let's <laughs> it she's a Jersey girl, um, uh, born, bred, and just, you know, lives to be one but she shared a lot of her views um in and around and close to home so if you have a chance go check out that video all right but tonight what you got here all right this is an osprey and it was taken at the um uh brandine well the edwin b forsyth national wildlife refuge which is pretty close to my house um and I talked about that a little bit in the um, the last in my presentation last week. Um, so I just love the way you know I'm always trying to shoot the ospreys. We have a lot um, that frequent the area uh, in the summer, and this one just gave me the best stare when I when I uh, went to edit it. It's very heavily cropped, but um, they they have nesting platforms all over the refuge and you can see the families and raising their babies all summer long. So Christy had sent me two photos and she says, I couldn't decide. You pick one. <laughs> I picked this one because of that stare and that just dead straight. I mean, the eyes are just like piercing, <laughs> piercing. Yeah. He looks like he's a little fluffed up. Like he could be confrontational if you irritated him just yeah yeah so um what lens are you using christy this was um the olymp i have the olympus um om one oh. i know <laughs> she, she did it to me <laughs> um okay. and it's the 100 to 400 okay so um when we well, let's just make fun of her. I don't think she's in this room tonight. She wasn't feeling very well. Valerie Hoffman has been preaching about the OM system for, I mean, ever since I've known her actually, so for several years. So um, apparently Christy um, drank some Kool-Aid and, and joined the OM family. How do you I like did. it? How do you like it? I love it. Yeah, it? it's, um, and that lens with the, um, with the new OM one is just, it's like, it's so sharp and um, yeah, definitely love it. Well, that was, he's, I don't know if it's a he or she, but it's, it's, I loved this bird only because I've only seen ospreys maybe once, maybe one, maybe three times, but they're few and far from where I am in central Texas. So um, I think the other one, other photo was a, oh gosh, uh, the word, he just went out of my mind, the white bird. Um, 
whatever that word was. We have so many of those. I couldn't get excited over them. So thank you for letting me select this one. So I think Susan just asked what the OM one is. And it's oh. it's the it's Canon's or sorry, Olympus's um yeah, I know. I used to shoot I usually shoot Canon. Um it's the I guess it's the micro four thirds, um, mm -hmm. and it's their most recent um uh camera. Okay. Thanks, Christy. All right, All right. next person up. All right, Patrick, tell us what this is. Okay, um, so <clears throat> I go camping, or we used to go camping a lot, but um, we hadn't for a few years because we had elderly dogs. One of them was our dog, Rogue, who is our one-eyed dog. Uh, she finally passed this past winter in uh, 2023, uh, and so we were free to go camping. So this is a, a upstate South Carolina um, park called Table Rock, which we've camped a lot. We were supposed to do a different hike, but we hiked around this one called Carrick, Carrick Creek Trail, and that's this this waterfalls, small little waterfalls. It's probably only three or four feet high. Um, I went with my wife, and we were walking around. I wasn't using, I didn't bring my tripod because we were just hiking, um, but I really liked the set of falls and decided, ah, oh, we're going to go back one day. So the next day after hiking another park, we came back, or I decided I wanted to hike up here, which was only about a 10 or so minute hike from the parking lot. And I thought, oh, my wife will hang out at the, the campsite. And she decided, no, 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 she wanted to come, but she wanted to sit at the lower falls um, and she wanted to crochet. So she took her crochet and sat there and crocheted with the bugs biting her. And I ran up to the falls. I thought I'd be, oh, 10 or 15 minutes and then hike back. But yeah, no, it wasn't going to happen. I just had way too much fun. Uh, I shot both color, black and white. But since I uh, knew I wanted to shoot long shutter speeds, I had to take my tripod. Uh, had a lot of fun doing that. And it was uh, um, one of the favorite pictures I took, I think, so far this year um uh during uh july but i guess if um yeah if you want other information i shoot canons uh this was at the r uh, my 24 to 240 which is the lens that i use all the time at um because i just looked at my <laughs> my data just so i could find it which was about 75 76 millimeters if you want to be exact but this was a 200 um uh, sorry um a two second exposure uh ISO 100 f16 because I didn't have my neutral densities to get the longer shutter speed uh and so yeah and I I, I knew at the time when I shot it it was one of it was one that I really liked how it cascaded down but like I said I there was three or four different pictures I pulled from there which was a lot of fun um and on a really positive note um I entered this in the nature conservancies uh, contest that just finished or closed. And they had uh, just a few days afterwards emailed me and asked me for the raw image. So uh, actually this and another picture got into the raw category. So I don't know how many they actually end up picking and how far it'll get. Uh, this is for the category freshwater. Uh, so, so that wow. was kind of cool. That's uh, way cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put it in your court to let us know what comes of that, because that is for you to get asked to send the raw. That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I am, Go ahead. I was, I'm curious. Um, when I first looked at this photo, I was like, what is that? And then I made it, you know, bigger on my screen went, oh my gosh. Um, what made you turn it into black and white? Um, actually, it's interesting because I've been shooting a lot more black and white lately, um, and I just really like the contrast. The 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 rocks there were very dark gray. Um, there was a spot that I did that had a little bit more color. <clears throat> These ones didn't, but the minute I shot it, to, I switched over to black and white because I'm one of those people that I have to see what it looks like in black and white um, to know how to shoot it. And then um, once I especially did the long shutter speed, you could really see it, the contrast against it uh, worked out much better than doing the color version. Yeah. Uh, I was, that was my second question. I was curious if the rocks were like mossy green and then, you know, 
but if they were gray, I can understand why you took it to black and white. Yeah, so, brownish gray. Yeah, green, I probably would have, I would have yeah, played with. Yeah. But again, yeah. being summer and it hadn't rained much. In fact, like I said, this is only, you know, a few feet high, uh, very little water actually coming off it. So I'd love to go back. Uh, yeah. And I got to stand right, right next to it and was on a slope. So it was a little scary of slipping. But I'd like to go back during a wet season and see how much water is coming over there at some point. It's very dramatic. It's very stunning. Um, I'm seeing a question from Carolyn. She says, congratulations. Can I ask when someone asks for a raw photo, how much shish do you charge? So Carolyn, what we were talking about, um, he had entered this into the Nature Conservancy photo contest, and they do that annually. And um, my recollection is that they do not charge. Right your photo. So everyone in this room, if you shoot nature, any type of nature, you should enter because it, it's like, you know, it, it, there are a lot of people that enter, but to be selected, um, to even, once they start asking for raw photos, they, they are, they are willing down to looking for that winner and checking the raw. They're just making certain that he hasn't, I don't know, move taking out a lot of stuff they just want to make sure that what they're seeing was um not overly edited outside of their roles correct me if i'm wrong patrick no i was gonna say exactly that's what it is um it's to show that it, the picture was yours how different it is there are a number of contests that do it do right. that as a yeah for uh, because I decided they didn't like as much heavy editing as was winning a lot of landscape words awards. But so there's no, I'm not charging or they're not getting my raw to use commercially. They're just checking it for uh, the quality. So Carolyn, I'm going to, I, um, I'll say this about um, raw from my limited experience of knowing someone that has done that. If someone's asking you for a raw to be used commercially, you better have a lot of zeros yeah. tendered over with your name on a check. Um, don't give up your raws. For a photo contest, this is what they're doing. They're not gonna, like, like Patrick said, they're not gonna do anything with his photo. Hopefully they'll give him a, give him <laughs> a big award by the end of this contest. But um, yeah, so, getting to charge for your photos. That's a whole nother conversation um, that um, I don't have the expertise in, but um, for yeah. that, Patrick, um, good luck. <laughs> it's well, really cool. Yeah. Considering I got an honorable mention last year, I'm very doubtful I'll get anything this year because <laughs> it seems to be well, sick. You never know. You and never, yeah, know. never know because I, I little on me from little, you know, Texas, I threw up a photo and, the next thing you know, I didn't win. I did not win, but it was my first photo to be published by them. So that's, you just don't know. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Oh. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. All right. Michelle Esclavon, you are up, my friend. Thanks. <laughs> huh? Hello. Hello. You can you hear have, me? Yes, I can hear you fine. You always have that terrified look that I'm going to put you on the spot or ask you to do something. And that's so unwarranted. I don't know why you, you're- I warranted. know exactly why, because I've been pressured many times before. <laughs> um, so this image is from the Ho Rainforest in Olympic National Park. And any if anybody has seen my photography before, I am drawn to forest. Um, it is- one of the things that just I, I've fallen in love with. And so we actually took my daughter up to Seattle for her uh, internship. And so we decided to make a family vacation and spent two weeks in Olympic National Park. And of the places we visited, I think the Ho Rainforest and the Kinalt Rainforest were my two favorite places. Um I was really amazed at the green and how everything was so green and how the light filtered through the trees and grabbed the moss. And it, it was a place I could have photographed, you know, for three or four hours. However, with them in tow, it was not quite a three or four hour session. <laughs> 
Um, I shot this with a Canon Mark IV, and the lens I used was an EF 17 to 40 F4L. Um, it was at 24 millimeters, and it was on a tripod, um, 1 50th of a second, F8, and ISO 640 because it was so dark. But I just love how the light hits the ferns and all the little, it, it was definitely for me serenity. <laughs> Um, I had the, um, opportunity to visit this forest, uh, like right after, well, right after COVID, it was one, of, it was my first trip after COVID kind of let us out into the world again. And you're right. You can spend hours taking pictures of ferns and moss and bark and, and you just repeat and, and do it all over again. Um, what I was taking just all struck by were all the different shades of green. You have no idea how many different shades of green there are in the world until you go into that forest. And um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful shot. And I, 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 this takes me back to my own opportunity to spend a little bit of time there. So I will say this, you know, whenever you, you know, you ditch the husband, um, I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's, it's a I'm ready to go back. <laughs> a repeat trip for me um susan wants to know how high was your tripod it looks probably like two feet yeah she says it looks like it's almost ground level it, it was pretty close to the ground yeah. while everybody was starting to swelter here in texas you know we had highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s so it was just wonderful i was going to ask you remind me um when was this this was, was june june yeah. yeah, I think it's like that all the time there. I think they should just make Washington State a national park and just call it a day because it every place is gorgeous. It really was. It didn't matter where we went. Every night was, you know, an evening spent on Rialto Beach watching the sunset and just definitely a cool place. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for sharing this photo with us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Karen Riley, you're up. Thank you. Um, this is um, the sunflowers. I grew these. these are, this is for my garden. Um, but after watching um, Lucy catch them, um, I was trying to get the bokeh and the layering. And um, and um, Linda, you know this from experience, but like the sunflowers face north and the sun is going over in the west. And, you know, I, I spent probably a whole week every evening going out there trying to catch the sun in the right place. And so um, this is what I got. So the one thing that I really wish I had gotten on it was a bee because they, they really, there is really something to busy as a bee because those things would just literally go around and around and around in a, just like in a, in a circular pattern all the way around those sunflowers. And so it was fun to watch, but um, yeah, the sunflowers in my garden were so fantastic this year. And um I was just thrilled to be able to get some layering and some bokeh in the back. Well, <laughs> okay. So now let's just do gardening confessions with Karen and Linda. So <laughs> <laughs> at least Karen had hers facing in the right direction. I planted the little seed and I thought the sunflower would, you know, um, face my house when it opened and it did not. It faced my neighbor's shed, tool shed. And it was just, so disheartening but when these is this a mammoth it's um i forget what they're called but the head of it is probably the size of a dessert plate so it's fairly large but it's only about four or five feet tall so <laughs> so karen and i recently sat around a table and traded seeds it was it was it was a lot of fun, but it's like, well, I've got, I don't know. We were, I think between the two of us, we'll have about 13 different varieties of sunflowers um, next year. So <laughs> we, we never will, have too many. We will continue to, well, the, we're, this is, we, sh we should be able to write this off. You're an accountant, make this a write-off so that we can um, buy more seeds. Um, yeah. Karen referenced Lucy Ketchum. So Lucy was one of my speakers earlier this Bring, I believe she was here. Um, she was 151. I know that. So look at for the, on the YouTube channel, uh, session 151. Her name's Lucy Ketchum. She's out of Houston. She has, uh, she's known for her, her floral 
uh, work. So she does a lot of workshops and um, she was, she was lovely to share. So um, thanks for giving her a shout out, Karen. And thanks for sharing. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Kathy Climbs. I was very excited when Kathy sent me this picture through Instagram DMs because I had never seen this bird before and I don't know that she had either. So Kathy, are you here? I'm here. Hey. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite excursions. We have um, quite a few different ones from my home and some we go to the desert, some we go to the pine forest. This one happens to be actually both. It, it starts out um, fairly uh, sagebrushy. You see deer, you see wild turkeys, uh, eagles, osprey, because it goes along a wide enough creek that um, there's a lot of fishing, going, birds going on. There's just all kinds of birds. And what it ends up at where we usually stop is a small reservoir called Sage Hen. And um, we had went up there and then um, was taking all these wonderful pictures of, of landscape even. And then I had been up there with the Bluebird Man because it's one of his trails where he banded bluebirds. And so I knew a lot about different areas, lots of different ecosystems. And round trip, it's 140 miles. So it's 70 miles up there. And it takes forever because I go, stop, <laughs> gotta take this picture. So we had been to Sage Hen and looked around and, and uh, you know, very nice and stuff like that. Nothing exciting going on up there, just a small little reservoir. And then we decided, well, we better get home because the happiness hour was gonna happen and I had to get back for that. That was the, that was the um, bottom line when we took off. So I gotta be back. <laughs> for me, it's at six o'clock. I gotta be back at six o'clock so I can get on and get ready. So we're driving maybe a little faster uh, than we were going up. And I caught this out of the corner of my eye and it was right by the road. And I said, stop, 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 back up, back up, back up. And I'm getting my camera ready and stuff like this. And and I have the Mark VI to the Canon and I have the RF 100-500 lens on. So when you stop, when we stopped and I'm looking at this bird and, I, and I get, I, my camera's there. So I'm looking at it with one eye and trying to get the camera right. I'm almost too close. And of course, there's no time to change a lens or anything like that. So I'm scooting over, putting it on my husband's lap to get this photo to get far enough away from it. And I said, I don't know what this is. I've never seen it before. It has that split tail. Uh, looks like a, some type of a woodpecker. Well, that's what it ended up being, is a white-headed woodpecker. It's about seven inches long. And it stayed there a long time and looked at me and and decided I wasn't a threat, so it stayed. And then when I got home, I started my search. What is this? How many do we have? This kind of stuff. And I still cannot get the uh, uh, a correct or what I feel like is the actual amount of these birds. Anybody in my circle of uh, Southwestern Idaho Birders Association, the Audubon uh, birders group, nobody has seen one of these birds in Idaho. So I called the forest service, the wildlife forest, uh, fish and game. The gal I talked to there said, never heard of it, but you know, there's a lot of birds that are migrating through. Well, I had done enough research on it that this bird does not migrate. It may migrate if there's an extreme amount of snow, if we have an extreme year, it may migrate down maybe to an area that is around 3,000 feet instead of staying up in the five to 6,000 feet area. But it, but they're, they just stay, they're not migratory. Now there's more in Washington, Oregon and California, approximately 60,000 worldwide of this. And that's just 
in the area there in the Pacific Northwest. And um, the last count that I could find, the first count was in 2015 and it was listed at 400. The last count I can find is 2021 and there was 14. Wow. So I was really excited because this is the rarest bird that I have ever found. And it was just a driving by, oops, stop seeing something, got back up, start trying to shoot too close. <laughs> um, it's a very pretty little bird. Um, the wings are glossy, but it is midnight black. It doesn't shine some of those uh, blues or anything like that. And it prefers, even though it's on, and I don't know how you pronounce that, Mount Melanin, um, but it's, we always call it skunk cabbage, just one of those colloquial terms. And it's picking out bugs and seeds and stuff like this. What well, its favorite place is a ponderosa pine, which you can see faded out over there, that kind of brownish reddish color on the other side of the screen, Linda. Yes, I see it. Mm -hmm. That is a ponderosa pine. And they like to eat, they tear apart the pine cones and eat the seeds out of pine cones or buds or things like that. So, um, you know, I'm. it's just like um, a gift to me. This is the, the best bird I've ever got so far. Yeah. He's wonderful because you'd sent me kind of a, 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 hey, this is what I got today. And I was like, what is this? And when he said it was a white headed woodpecker, I had never heard of that. Oh, um, yeah. In the comments, I just saw from Christy, um, she said she saw one in the Yosemite. So um, yeah. it is such a cool um, bird because you're right. I don't see any other colors um, refracted off of his off his feathers it's just it's beautiful he's he's handsome he is actually yeah. it's she yeah, it's probably she oh because the male i think you said has, has the red, red dot. dot okay yeah it's a she so she's gorgeous, gorgeous. yeah it's a, it was exciting to me when i started reading about it going wow i do have a rare bird here that's yeah. so cool hopefully hopefully you can do something with him yeah or with her well, yeah. thanks for sharing, Kathy. It's almost thanks. like you know, jumping in the car with you and your poor husband. More importantly, did you make the happiness hour on time? I did. <laughs> uh, about five minutes. I had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. And, and just for, you know, uh, everybody that's paying attention, if you're uh, doing, finding cool stuff like that, you are excused from happiness hour. But uh, <laughs> good for you for showing up. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. All right, here's the next one. Oh, Gail. When I saw this one, it's like, Gail, gosh. Ah, Colorado. Yes, I I love Colorado. We, we started going to Colorado on a regular basis in about 2003. And our kids loved it too. So we've been back almost every year in the summer. It's a great way to escape the heat here. But um, we went this past summer at the end of July. So I saw wildflowers, you know, quite a few, but not as many as I would have found if I went earlier. But um, we, we stay kind of at the top of Mount Crested Butte. And um, this is in Crested Butte. And there's a path that we take down from the top down to the town of, of Crested Butte. So um, after taking a bunch of wildflower pictures, we stopped because I saw this, you know, it's it's a river, it's called Slate River. And there were some kids doing um, paddle boarding, but, you know, after they went by, I took the picture of this because I just thought it was so pretty. And, um, you know, they have, there's a lot of you know, places to find water, it seems like, around there. Something, and, we don't, something we you know, don't. lakes and this, you know, lakes and rivers all the way into Gunnison, too, which is next to Crested Butte. But, you know, it's beautiful. And um, 
we we go every year to, that we can to get away from the heat. <laughs> I don't blame you. And I know um, somebody else is saying it too, that you, you've posted a lot of Colorado photos. They are, you do, and it's, you do a fine job <laughs> for, for um, Colorado um, tourism. They should like reach out to you. Um, what are you using? What lens are you using? Is this a wide angle by chance? Yeah, it's the Sony A7C is the camera. Cause I like, it's mirrorless. I like that they're lightweight things of yeah i've got some flip disc in my neck or something and it, i just need something that's not heavy but i bought the tamron 28 to um 200 because you can do the wide angle and then you know the telephoto isn't as great as having i have another one that goes to 300 but you know it'll do for a trip like this and I don't have to carry a bunch of you know lenses with me you can I mean with that range you can do a little you can get a variety of stuff especially with your landscape so yeah I just and I cropped it a little bit just to get some junk in the corners out huh. that's okay yeah, I, yeah. Junk but is, not a lot yeah junk is inevitable in landscape photography so um, what I liked about when I saw this, it immediately, just the lines, you start with the water and it just takes you back um, through those mountains. And I just, I just love all those angles and curves that you can play around with from this perspective. So thanks for sharing. Oh, thank you. And this was down near the town. You, you can walk all the way into the town and it was almost to the town. It was pretty. It's got a beautiful view there. Well, we're getting a little bit of a break from the heat. So um, had you said this to us in, you know, early June, it'd be even more size on my, on my part, but it's really beautiful. And I'm, remind me again, what time of year was this? This was the last week of July. And so um, we usually go the end of June to um, the first week or two of July. I mean, that's when it's usually at peak. Right. When you but say, are you talking stuff. about the wildflowers at peak? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, um, that's on my bucket list. Well, thanks for sharing, Gail. Oh, thank you. Okay. Let's see. Next, Sue Pitts. What are we looking at here, Sue Pitts? Great. Okay. So, um, as everybody in this room can probably agree with me, uh, one of I'm my, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally inspired to uh, get better at photography by hanging with Linda. And, um, you know, she had these, um, her yard was full of caterpillars. And she had a, a business trip planned. And she asked me if I would come over and maybe adopt some of her caterpillars. And so, I mean, this was the, th this picture on the left was the first scene I saw. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, how cool is this? I, I can just sit in my backyard all day and take pictures. So she loaded me up with some um, plants that had caterpillars on them. And I think I counted about a dozen when we when I loaded up. But by the time I got home, I realized that every plant that she sent home with me had two more, um, what he called the baby caterpillars larva. But anyway, so I ended up with probably at least 20 or 30 by the time I unpacked everything and got it into the flower bed. And she, she insisted uh that I plant fennel, parsley, carrots, and um what was the other one? Dill. Um dill. What? Dill. Phil. Dill. 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 Yeah, right. Okay. So uh I ran to the nursery and loaded up everything I could get and got home and realized that some of those plants are also had larva on them. So I'm up to about 30 caterpillars. But uh, another person that really inspires me is Mika. So 
I got my uh, a shoot with a, a Nikon Z6 with a 100 millimeter lens and a Nisi, um, uh, tel not a telephoto, but a macro lens, a filter on it. And so I was in heaven taking pictures, but uh, I had to send my husband to the nursery about every third day to restock me. And again, every time he brought a plant home, there were at least three more caterpillars. So I finally was inspired to buy a, um, it's a called a, a nest mm, something. It's it's like a an incubator for uh, caterpillars and it's about maybe 36 inches tall and, you know, so this image on the right, I mean, I, I've never raised caterpillars. My grandchildren have, and they've sent me pictures, but I was in heaven with these things in the back, in my backyard. And so I set up this incubator and put all the plants in it and some, uh, you know, all of the, the larvae that I had. And um, Linda told me that I had to keep it clean every day. Uh, that was my, not my favorite part of this process. <laughs> you know, when I first started, I could just take them out and dump it upside down and start over. But when they started multiplying, it was difficult to just take 20 out and, and clean everything. So what amazed me about this picture on the right, if you look closely, it, I mean, look how they, look how this caterpillar spun a thread around itself and attached it to the netting of this incubator. So, I mean, if you can imagine, you know, let's see, how, when did you go on vacation? When, I mean, when did you go on your trip, Linda? When did I pick these up? Probably mid, last part of June, last week of June. Okay. So, um, and of course, the flower bed that I put them in was the most exposed flower bed that I have in my yard. And uh, the uh, afternoon sun just scorched it. So I was out there watering and shading and tending to these animals. <laughs> my neighbor saw it was absolutely crazy. And, you know, <laughs> I was, I was, in, I was enjoying it so much, but I had my hands full. Fortunately, one of my neighbors has a, um, a green, I have a green belt behind my home, but she has filled hers with flowers. And she said she could adopt some of the caterpillars because she, she had plants that were just thriving and mine were getting a little bit weak. Oh, and I also had, since we have a green belt behind our home, I had critters, like, you know, I planted carrots like, like um, Linda told me to. And the next morning I saw some rabbits in my flower bed. And uh, another day I saw deer eating, I think it was the something green, maybe the parsley, I'm not sure. And there was some other animal, uh, not a possum, but some other animal that was enjoying the feast in my backyard. So I called my friend that has a huge flower bed that is protected from the sun. And she said, oh, sure, bring them on over. So I think I took maybe 13 or 14 the first day and about three or four days later my flower bed was really scorching and all of the plants were just they just were not surviving not not because I wasn't watering them but but because the heat was so bad and so I took another handful over to her so uh, my plan now is I have been nurturing that flower bed trying to get it to where Next season, when uh, Linda has caterpillars to, to adopt, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to have not only a full bed of all of the things I was supposed to have to start, but I'm also going to have some sort of shade over it. And I haven't decided how I'm going to do that, but I'm definitely going to prepare a little bit better for uh, next season. So, Karen, when you and Linda start making all your plans about what I need to do to get ready, could y'all just shoot me a text and say, so just just go get the fennel today because you're going to run out. The nurseries are going to run out in about maybe uh, May of next year. So <laughs> I need to get prepared. Sue, so you're not special in that way because 
um, I had given someone else a couple of my caterpillars and I get this text that said, oh my gosh, I can't find fennel. And I'm like, honey, you're not going to find fennel in a 10 mile radius from my home. So um, I had definitely bought every potted fennel that I could find. Thank you for taking- You warned me, but I didn't believe you. In, in a oh yeah, just go to that nursery and pick up some fennel. I forgot what he brought home, but it wasn't dill, carrots, fennel, or, or um, parsley. <laughs> These are- um, so. I don't think you said, but if you did, I'll, I'll repeat it. These are black swallowtails and they might be Eastern black swallowtails, but I am, I'm not now I, my brain's not working. So, but, um, they were a delight to, um, have in my garden and I was able to share with a lot of people. So thanks for taking uh -huh. it on. I love, I love the process. So. Yeah, I do, I do too. I don't know if I told you this, but, um, uh, when I, you know, I had some of these uh, cocoons, is that what you call this one right here? Cocoon. I had, I think it's about six of them in the incubator and um, a couple of them popped out and, you know, flew off and I was so excited about that. We celebrated, but then they, there were like four that just didn't do anything. And so I did my research and uh, it said that they may wait until the next season and I'm like, are you kidding me? I've got to wait eight more months for these dudes to, to you know, pop out. That, so they all eventually popped out and left. I wasn't there to see it, but I was glad that they, they made it. They, you know, they were, they, uh, it was a success. So thank you for, for turning me on to this. And thank you for Mika for teaching me how to take macro photos when I, finally get them all to where I, I can even, you know, you have to do sort of handstands to get pictures of these when you're in your flower bed. I mean, they don't just sit on top of the plant. You kind of have to creep in and kneel down and turn sideways. So, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt, really. It's you're looking for, yeah, it is. And you could be staring at it and not realizing that's what it is. Thanks. Yeah, for you're right. All right. Let's see. We've got it was fun. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Kevin Hogue, you're up next. Hello. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Or th thank you, everyone. Um, uh, so I'm Kevin Hogue from San Antonio, a uh, longtime photographer, but relatively new to birds. I took an interest in birds uh, during the COVID lockdown and got specifically interested in, in birds in flight. Uh, now, I did travel around a bit this summer and thought about a summer highlight, but this is actually real close to home. Um, I really love these black neck stilts, and they're year-round residents at the um, uh, Mitchell Lake Audubon Center here in San Antonio, and I go and shoot them when I can. Um, and um, and I chose this picture um, uh, and showed it to my daughter, uh, uh, one of my daughters, and and she uh, has a good eye for for the photographers me input now and then and she said you didn't pick your most exciting picture um it's just kind of yeah it's a nice picture um and then she made the observation that well you could have done that with photoshop and put one bird onto the other but i actually picked it because i didn't photoshop it and because it was kind of representing a a particular approach a particular technique um so um uh, so these were shot, um, uh, uh, or this this picture was shot um, uh, um, in the. Um, it's over the, over the water. They've got a lot of basins there, and um, uh, and oftentimes the basins will get really still. And I love the reflections. And so I was actually zeroing in on the reflection on the on the bird at lower left, and um, and suddenly I saw an opportunity. Um, I saw this other bird coming in, and um, I was already shooting in portrait mode. Um, I often do that with the taller birds, and uh, a lot of people doing wildlife photography say, oh, you never use portrait mode, but I, I like shorebirds, and uh, and I do a lot in portrait mode. Um, and so, uh, so I was in portrait mode and saw this guy coming in, and... Um, uh, normally, I shoot just single shot. I like the discipline of knowing when I'm actuating the trigger. But when I saw him coming in, 
I saw an opportunity and I did quickly uh, create a burst and I set the camera to 10 frames per second and then kept focused on the uh, on the, the waiting bird as the other bird was closer and I and I kind of ignored it other than frame you know making sure it was in the in the frame I kept my focus on that um, on the waiting bird um, and by shooting multiple frames then I picked the one there were actually about three images where both birds were in the same focal plane and and then I like this one the best for um, in, in terms of they're gliding birds especially when they're approaching a landing and so the wings don't move much um, so I didn't have to worry about wing position or anything, but um, the one that was waiting um, took its one leg and picked it up. And and I liked that. And I liked what it did to the reflection. So I, I had three shots that were in focus and I took that one because I liked the leg position. Um, so um, uh, that's um, that's kind of the quick summary of the uh, of the birds. Um, uh, in terms of uh, of shooting, this was done with a 500 millimeter prime, um, and um, I should I should Nikon. It's a Z9, and this is actually my my last of my old F mount lenses that I still just really love. So it was uh, adapted to the uh, to the Z mount, the mirrorless mount, um, and um, uh, and so that's what I was shooting. And it's uh, I shot at the at uh, aperture 5.6, so I didn't have a lot of. Um, uh, focal plane, if you will, um, but um, was able to get, as I say, a couple shots that were in focus and picked the one. Um, so um, I think that's kind of the summary. Um, and and Great. again, just 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 the other the you know never rule out portrait mode, even if uh, you know even when shooting wildlife. Um, this is is mildly cropped. I'd say it's about a ten percent crop just to get um, to get the composition what i wanted and there's a little bit of photoshop work just because um it, it's really just eliminating spots in the water because i love the the pure reflection but then you get little stuff floating in the water and i took all that kind of stuff out uh otherwise it's pretty much as seen so well um when you sent this over i love the black neck stills i think they're one of my favorite shorebirds but immediately what I loved in this was um, where the legs are crossing it, they have such an unusual shape to them. They look like square eights almost. And I, I just thought the mimic of that reflection just makes this so interesting. Um, a lot of um, the black neck stilts that I have, you know, you get two straight legs in the water, you get the reflection, they're really cool. But this was very unusual to see. Um, and also, again, it being in portrait mode, very unusual to see two birds in portrait mode. So um, I thought this was a, a great composition. I don't know. Um, I, I liked what you just said of you like the discipline of doing one shot. I'm like, what are you thinking? You've got a Z9, dude, 20 frames per second. That's what it can do. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've shot it at 20 frames per second precisely once just to see if it would do it. Um, uh, yeah. I do shoot at 8 to 10 to 12 now and again, um, mostly if I am trying with birds in flight to get wing position or something. Um, but like I say, with the stilts, they they like to glide, especially yeah. he's coming in for a landing. And so his wings weren't moving much at all. But I, I needed the faster frame rate to to catch one in focus uh and catch catch one where they're both in focus so what i find really um kind of interesting and I, I i'm looking for that horizon line but the between the sky and the water there's no color there's no hard uh line there it was just actually there th that's entirely water is it really okay yes yeah i'm up i'm up on just enough of a bank okay. um that i'm and the and the basins are long, and it was long in that direction, so they're okay. kind of longish and narrow. So that is that is all water. I um, just could not figure out where is the the water line. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. If there was a rise, then there's on the other side there would be trees and and green and stuff. But uh, no, it's entirely water. So. Okay. Well, I can sleep at night now. Um, but. <laughs> Z9, shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah, so I will have mine on, you know, 20 frames, you know, per second. And then I pretty much, well, accidentally 
um, hit the shutter and have like, I don't know, 50, 60, 80 shots of my car floor mats. Because <laughs> it's really done that. <laughs> Pros and cons. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you yeah. sharing. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, let's see. We've got, all right. Where's Mark Gelman? Hi, Linda. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. I'm good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, tell us about this photo. Well, this was taken actually a year ago last summer, um, okay. July of 2022. I go to Canyon Lake at least once a year, sometimes more often uh, if I have the opportunity. Um, for those of you who don't know where Canyon Lake is, it's roughly halfway between San Antonio and Austin. It's closer to San Antonio uh, than it is Austin. But uh, if you're familiar with where New Braunfels is, you take Highway 306 out from 35 and it'll take you right up past Canyon Lake. Um, but going out there quite a bit. And, and, and this summer, my daughter and her husband went Um and and we'd like to spend time on the lake and in the lake and, and in the river. But uh, this was very, very near the Canyon Lake Dam. So we had driven, I've driven by there, you know, many, many times. And as you're going to the dam, um, there are two trails with a little parking lot, parking lot off to the left side of the road. And uh, it's the Guadalupe River South Trail and then there's a North Trail. You know, and and passing by every time, it's, yeah, we're going to have to stop there one time. We're going to have to go see what that's all about. So we had been out on the lake um, this day, and it was hot, you know, 101 degrees. And we were headed back to the condo, and and my son-in-law said, hey, why don't, we, why don't we go grab a bite to eat, cool off, and then come back closer to dusk, and let's see what's on the trail. And I said, that's a great idea. I'll bring my camera. So we came back a few hours later. I had my backpack, and... Um, they, they got into the river uh, a little bit and, and I took off down the trail. So I, I actually got four really good shots um, of different areas. But this is, if you kind of look down, down the river there, it kind of bends to the right and a little bend to the left. And uh, around that second bend to the left is where the dam is. But of course, the water is exceptionally low, uh, even lower this year than it was last year. But the closer you are to the dam, the colder the water is. And the Guadalupe is cold anyway, but this is, this is literally ice cold. So, you know, you'd think 101 degrees, even this was taken, you know, just before dusk. Um, and intentionally the sky was, I didn't want the sky in there. You can see the, the, the golden rays of the sun on the top of the trees out, out in the distance. So, um, I waded out into the river and I'm on a little rock bank, but I'm still standing in the water about ankle deep. And it is literally freezing, you know, the, from ankles up, I'm dripping with sweat, but I'm shaking because it's so cold in the water. And uh, it was kind of ironic because there was a, a mother and her, her daughter were off to my right. And uh, they were kind of playing in the water. And, and that, that, that little girl kept saying, Mommy, Mommy, what's that guy doing? <laughs> you know, but this is shot uh, on a tripod. And it's about a four-second exposure, I believe. I had a circular polarizer on it. Um, I shoot Sony. Um, and this was a 24-millimeter uh, setting on my 24-70 to 70 GM lens, uh, uh, Sony GM lens. And it... it uh, it was, you know, I'm a little bit like Kevin. I don't do, I don't do bird photography or or, or wildlife, but I, I, I like the process. I love shooting off of a tripod, um, and I'm very much into showcasing Texas. Um, I really love capturing scenes, even if it's an everyday type of scene. But I want people to to look at that photograph and say. Wow, is that Texas? <laughs> you know, or is that is that Friendswood, uh, or is that wherever? Um, I, I want them to to be surprised a little bit. So, uh, even though it's hot down here, I love Texas. I'm native Texan, and and uh, just really like trying to showcase things in a little different perspective. Is that all you have to say about this picture, Mark? Seriously. Seriously. Well, well, I actually, I, that's all I was going to say, but <laughs> thanks to Winifred, 
um, who announced uh, the the Naturescapes contest a few months back. Um, the, the 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 rules they had to be two years old or less, and this was of course um, several months back. So I had six shots that that I thought were relatively good, but I didn't expect. I just well, I'm going to send them in. You know, I really didn't expect to get any kind of reply or anything. But they chose four uh, out of the six, um, and uh, we had to print and frame them and deliver them to the San Marcos Activity Center. But they had the gallery opening last Saturday evening, so uh, I drove out and spent the night in Gonzales Friday night and Saturday night. Um, but but drove to the to the event center or the activity center in San Marcos and was just totally shocked. I it, it ended up winning the uh, I think best natural waterscape for the Naturescape Awards. But I, I'm going to tell you there is some outstanding photography there. And if you ha- if you live in the San Marcos Austin San Antonio area, those photographs uh, all of the frame prints are on the wall. Uh, in the activity center, and it's they're all on display through the through the month of October. So if you get a chance, swing by there and look at the awesome fo- photographs that are there. But Winifred won. Uh, uh, oh, what was the other? What's the other lady's name that's in our? Um, Carol Sewer. Yeah, Carol Sewer, and um, I don't know, there was a couple. I think there was one other, but anyway, there were. There, I was there. <laughs> oh, Susan. Okay, yes, yeah, Susan. Yeah. Susan was there. Right. But it was what was so cool about going and it wasn't the winning that. Oh, that was that was shocking. I mean, I didn't expect to win. And that was a a pleasant surprise. But what was so fun was um, meeting the people that that attend the happiness happiness hour. You know, when I I went to Georgetown, uh, you know, last March, got to meet you face to face and some other folks that have attended and have done presentations here, you know, for the the uh, Georgetown Photography Festival. But it's always cool to to put, I mean, we can see each other with the cameras, but to see somebody personally and get to talk to them a little bit, that that was that was more of a, a more fun to me, you know, just to get out there and see the people and then see the other photographs. It was just awesome. I just love looking at photographs. So uh, I was fortunate enough to win, but uh, there were some really good good people out there. Congratulations. Thank you. I wasn't going to let you go without um, at least... Um acknowledging that so um thanks mark sure you're welcome all right the last is miss ziggler trisha ziggler come into the room and uh, before she gets started she had sent me two photos and they were both really good um but i was drawn to this one in particular so trish are you there I'm here. Um, so yeah, there's nothing spectacular about about this image. It's just more the story of how I got it. Um, if if y'all if anyone follows me on on Instagram, you know I kind of have this thing for cows, and I'm going to pull over and take pictures of cows. Well, this particular day, uh, my daughter lives in a very rural area, and. Um, there's lots of cow pastures all along the gravel road going to and from her house. And so I was leaving and um, have to drive really slow on that, on that road because it's pretty rough. And there was this white calf and strangely that little white calf is not in this image, but there was a white calf standing along the, the fence line by the road. And as I came, you know, creeping by the calf started following along the fence line and I thought oh isn't he cute well I'm gonna I wonder how long he's gonna stay and I'm gonna pull over and take a picture of it and I didn't even have my camera so this is actually a cell phone shot but um so I finally got to a place where I could pull over and I get out of the truck and he's standing there at the at the fence line and I guess I got a little too close to his personal space or something and he just turned around and bolted up the hill. And this this herd of cows, they were way off in the distance on top of the hill. He goes bolting up there, just mooing the whole way, just nah, nah. <laughs> like, you know, like he was in trouble or, or uh, and so 
when he got up to the herd, they all turn around and they start running towards the fence, the whole herd of them. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, should I get back in the truck? I don't, I don't know what's going to happen here. But they all ran up and then they just abruptly stopped at the same time and had this wonderful little group pose for me. <laughs> And so it was just, I have a video of it, actually. I, so I turned on the video when the calf started running. And I wish I could share the video because it's really one of those, you really had to be there to experience this, to know how stinking funny it was. Because uh, it was as if he was running up there saying, hey, this lady wants to take our picture. Come on, come on. And they just turned around and gathered right in front of me. All right. So what you're going to do after, you know, you get off hair is you're going to post it to your, my story so that the people that are in this room can go look and, at and see story. the video. It's really small. I don't know how it will look, but, uh, but since you, you know what you're looking for. So I will do that. You know what you're looking for. You're going to see a little white calf streaking up across this pasture, going up to the top of the hill and then see the herd turn around and start galloping down. Well, just, to, just the fact that you got so many cows looking at you. The, I mean, they are more prepared than my family reunion photos. I can't, I can't get like, you know, six people to look at you. That's why I love taking pictures of cows because they will all turn around and look at you. <laughs> so. Trish, as always, you're funny and your stories <laughs> are funny. And I don't know what. <laughs> how things happen to you but you're hilarious okay sue's curious what f-stop are you using do you know well this was actually my cell phone oh your cell phone. yeah <laughs> it was actually my cell phone i can't even remember i think i had my camera around my neck but i always i i take i take cell phone pictures a lot just to grab something real quick and um and then you know it all just started happening it's hilarious well, it always comes down to using what's in your, what's what you've got. Yeah. Use what you got, what's handy. And a lot of time, I mean, except for a little while ago when I lost my cell phone in my own house. Um, yeah. We almost, that's why I have a landline. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never find my phone. All oh, right, Trish. Phone. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, with that, let me go ahead and stop the share. Let's see if I can do that here. It looks, look at that. It's like I've done this before. Um, if there are any questions, now is the time to put them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that participated in this behind the shot um, presentation. Um, I before we started, I think I said, I always like, this is one of my favorite sessions that we do. Um, I always hold it to the last meeting before we take off for the holidays. Um, but this year I had an opportunity to invite a canon legend, Daryl Galeen, to come and speak to us and the 13th of December, I think that's right, um, worked out. It's the last Wednesday before we take off for the holidays. So um, I couldn't, not have him come. So thank you guys for sharing your summer shots with us. And with that, let me go ahead and close the session out. And um, I want to thank you all for participating. So next week, South Dakota based landscape and travel photographer, Andrew Pichon will be here to present travel photography unveiled gear, bags, and global wonders. Until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon. Mm -hmm.